as we begin, it has begun to rain, begun to rain, uh, and we are praying that the waters have gone down enough so it won't be as bad this time. So pray. We are praying for everyone uh, who's been impacted. Uh, Sandy will give a little update here in just a little bit about that. Uh, before we begin today, I uh, just want to uh, mention that uh, y'all, most of you who've been here for a while know uh, Tim and Blanche. Tim was pastor here for many years, about 34 years or so, and Blanche passed away last night. And while our prayers go out to this family, uh, she's going to be at the call funeral home and they're making arrangements today. So be sure to check on the on their website. So pray for this family. Uh, and uh, I think uh, we sent them uh, a card, a DoorDash card. They're going to, I think Ron has a card. He might read it here in a little bit, but uh, Andy's with us today. Uh, and so just pray for them. Our uh, first lectionary reading is from Hosea, chapter 11, 1 through 11. Good morning. So our first lectionary reading, um, like Larry said, is from Hosea, chapter 11, 1 through 11. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. The more I called them, the more they went from me. They kept sacrificing to the Baals and offering incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. They shall return to the land of Egypt, and Assyria shall be their king, because they have refused to return to me. The sword rages in their cities, it consumes their oracle priests, and devours because of their schemes. My people are bent on turning away from me. To the Most High they call, but he does not raise them up at all. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Adma? How can I treat you like Zeboam? My heart recoils within me. My compassion grows warm and tender. I will not execute my fierce anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim, for I am God and no mortal, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come in wrath. They shall go after the Lord who roars like a lion. When he roars, his children shall come trembling from the west. They shall come trembling like birds from Egypt and like doves from the land of Assyria, and I will return them to their homes, says the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Stand, we invite you to stand as we do the Apostles' Creed and just remain standing for our song. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It sounds like music in my ear 
the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. a moment. Sandy's going to share a little bit more detail on uh, flood relief um, just from a technical standpoint. So as you guys know, it's literally throw a dart at the map in eastern Kentucky and you can find a area that's been flooded right now. Um, the reason there's such urgency right now when it comes to equipment and flood buckets and cleaning supplies is this is the crucial time where you've, you've got to get those technical supplies to people as the water's coming down. Because once the water is gone from the house, the mud hardens. And if anybody's been around hard mud, it is literally concrete and it's nearly impossible to get out then without equipment. So that's why we're, we're really in a, a state of urgency to get those technical equipment, tools, shovels, squeegees, mops, all that stuff out. Because right now, well, hopefully the water keeps coming down. I see some rain out there. It's in that receding point where we have just a couple days left until the sun starts coming out and that mud starts hardening. Um, but no, it's also a, a long-term thing. So this phase is, of course, just get the mud out if possible. And then the next phase is, of course, clothing, ongoing stuff. Kids are going back to school. So there's a whole, whole new phase. Uh, we were at the community center yesterday and then the other half of our team that we work with a lot they went out into some areas in Floyd County and pretty much the viewpoint and, and these were folks that have gone through the flooding relief many many times and and the statement was it's either bad or irreparable there's no middle ground anymore there's no they're going to be okay we just need to clean them out it's either bad or they're barely, they're, they're not standing anymore. So just so you know, that's, that's what we mean when we say long-term relief. So wherever we can play a role in that, let's definitely look at. Um, so for the second lectionary reading today, it's from Colossians uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly, earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with Him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idol idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in your life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourself of all such things of these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge and the image of the Creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. The Word of God for the people of God. Uh, yesterday, uh, 
the last couple of days, uh, some of you may or may not know that Sandy is the uh, the district coordinator for uh, disaster relief for the Methodist Church, uh, and that's a pretty big district. Um, and she's been working tirelessly, and Samantha and, and some of the family were at the Mark Center. But anyway, uh, was at home uh, yesterday, and there was a call came in from the bishop. And, Usually if the bishop calls, you're in trouble, but uh, we, I wasn't in trouble. It was for Sandy. Uh, just thanking uh, us, her, uh, and letting us know that the prayers are there uh, for the work that we do. And so uh, first of all, uh, I know uh, Samantha with her district uh, in Prestonburg, an area there, uh, there's a whole lot going on. And so send, just share with us what you have there. Sure, and you know, I told Larry I, I, the same thing. I, I feel so unworthy, so unworthy to be in this position of being the district coordinator, and especially when I woke up the other morning, and I guess the verse, um, you know, where it, you know, she said, maybe you were, perhaps you were born for a moment such as this, and it sort of came through my mind thinking, well, I'm just going to have to get to work. But... Um, Basically, I just wanted to share with the church this morning. Uh, I shared on the Facebook page, and uh, many of you, thank you so much, brought your water in today. They shared a district-wide plea for uh, if every church would bring in bring water. So we'll be gathering those today and get those over. Uh, but we have created a hub in Pike County, which will be the Pike United Methodist Church. So if you know of other churches or even just people in the community, they are more than welcome in Pike County to take those over there to their church. And they're going to be having people there staffed to accept waters and flood buckets, which we put out a plea again for flood buckets. I think um, someone in the community that uh, uh, doesn't even go to a church around in our area sent me a note and said, can I bring this to your church? So that's what's sitting back in the back. So we'll get those out. And um, yesterday, um, I'm not sure about Samantha but, uh, and Adam, because uh, Adam and Jared were there as well. One of the biggest things was those flood buckets. And uh, so thank you, church, for, um, you know, something that the United Methodist Church is, is known for. And so we're just so thankful that we were able to, to be able to get blood buckets out yesterday. And, and they, they were going out to all of the um, fire departments in Pike County yesterday, too. Uh, well, not all of them, but the Sycamore, Shelby Valley, Shelby Valley Rescue. And forgive me, does anybody know the other one? But they're all up in that area. Oh, Elkhorn City community. So I want to make sure if you know somebody in that area, they can go. That's where some of the flood buckets went. And real quickly, I'm sorry, I'm going on too long. But um, we had some wonderful people that came in. Uh, was that Friday night or Saturday night? It's all going together. But they brought in and drove in five hours from Owensboro and from northern Kentucky and brought, um, you know, all of those flood buckets from their churches down to the Expo Center, which, of course, uh, Ray Jones and his staff are the ones that are taking that out and distributing it to the local fire departments to get out. So we're just so thankful for those, those people. I mean, that was 10 hours that they drove and so and they prayed over them for us it was just beautiful so just wanted to encourage you the flood relief uh, flood bucket instructions if you need are on the MCOR website and the hygiene kits that was one of the things I think yesterday there was a lot of need for hygiene items um, so if you wanted to do that as well and I noticed somebody brought some back in the back too so thank you church thank you to the United Methodist Church community of churches and you know and basically the entire community of our Christian brothers and sisters there's so many working together uh, the United Baptist Convention the Mennonite groups and the Samaritans Prayer, so many so just want to just thank you all for your giving and just ask that you continue to help because it's just yesterday one lady in particular came up to the table and just was fine until she got to the table and she just put her hands over her head and she just started crying and it was just so heartbreaking because you know she lost everything so just uh, 
get the word out, let people know that we still need, uh, still need, just like Samantha said, we need things. Uh, you can look on any list, Clorox, buckets, shovels, anything they can do. So thank you all for allowing me to share this morning. I would add that you can donate uh, not only to our church, 111 Taylor Hill, Pipeville, for that. Uh, also, you can donate to the Ministerial Association, and uh, they'll be uh, helping as well. Uh, other organizations, Pipeville Medical Center is going to be doing a telethon on Wednesday, and so there'll be plenty of uh, chances to give for that. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Even in bad times. I don't know if you all have read this, but Buddy Forbes really touched my heart yesterday. He's a reporter for WYMT. And children, speaking of the people at WYMT, Brandon Robinson probably saved a lot of people's lives Thursday morning and things. He was up for 40 some hours giving weather reports, uh, sending out the alerts, and trying to save people's lives. And that's a wonderful thing that he did that for our, our region. But Buddy wrote this, <clears throat> we are a region dripping, dripping with the excess water that found its way into the places we once thought safe and dry, dripping with exhaustion and fear as the work and weight of everything just looks to be too much, dripping with heartache and dread as the blessings that once overflowed mixed in with the flowing waters. We are a region coated, coated in debris and the scattered remnants of a reality that no longer exists for many of our people. Coated in mud, layers of caked on dirt, replacing the foundation of everything so many worked so hard to build. Coated in a strange awareness that isn't the first time and it won't be the last. We are a region overwhelmed, overwhelmed by the quickness of change and the shortness of life. Overwhelmed, excuse me, by the sheer magnitude of the waters that came and the work and worry they left behind, overwhelmed at the idea of how to move forward. But we are also dripping, we also drip of something more, love, <clears throat> care, empathy, sympathy, and steadfast spirit drip from the bridges and underpinning as help makes its way home. Hope drips from the tired hands of every person who has worked to clean up and move forward, reassured by the reaching hands of those who want to pick up their burdens. And the ugly things that coat us are no match for the beautiful things that cover us. We are coated in quilts of possibility, patched together by our neighbors and friends. We are coated in the armor of safety, knowing the floods of life are never faced alone. It's sometimes hard to tell the difference between gray clouds and silver linings, so finding the good things in all of the tragedy is overwhelming in itself. We over, are overwhelmed with the stories of love thy neighbor and look for the helpers, which show the kind of home we have. We are overwhelmed by boots on the ground as the Calvary of compassion shows the rest of the world a truth that looms above all. We are a region standing. For our announcements, Sunday school begins Sundays at 10 a.m. and morning worship begins at 11. Wednesday night Bible study is at 6 p.m. with pizza and fellowship at 5.30. Today is our fifth Sunday offering. If you don't have it today, uh, you can bring it next week or until they decide to send it to the Methodist home. Today are flowers I think we should have in memory of the 26 victims of the Eastern Kentucky flooding. If you'd like to honor or have someone in memory for the flower display, please sign up for the month of August. Our July Salem partner, prayer partner is Salyersville Prater Memorial. Any other announcements? This morning, some special prayer requests. The Potter family as they lost their son, Debbie Penix, Guy Mayer, Moyer. Moyer, the pastor of the Pikeville United Methodist Church, all the flood victims' families, those who are devastated by the flood. Let's remember our power company employees, the state highway workers that are working around the clock to get things kind of back to normal. Also remember Bobby Sullivan's family, Larissa Ratliff as she continues to heal, 
Sarah Chaffins as she continues to heal. Any other spoken prayer requests? <clears throat> and we want to remember Beth's mom and dad and keep them in our prayers in Beth. If nothing else, we'll ask our pastor to come lead us in prayer. You mentioned uh, Pastor uh, Guy Moyer. He's the new pastor at the Pipeville Methodist Church, and uh, he's got an upcoming surgery. He's had some uh, cancer uh, in the past, and uh, so we want to pray for him this morning in, in their church. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, as we come before you, we are thankful today as we sat here in, in our comfortable building, realizing there are many, Lord, today who are displaced, whose lives have been shattered. And even among us, Lord, there may be some who, for one reason or another, is going through a difficult time. Those listening, and watching by way of internet are experiencing their own problems. But God, we know that in the midst of the worst of times, God, that your presence is near us. You bring people into our lives that can speak to us and just their presence can Help us endure. And the Holy Spirit is a comfort like none other. And so, Lord, we continue to pray for these uh, people that have been affected and, and so many, God, in our area. And we thank you for the help that's pouring in, and we pray that it would be used adequately. And we pray, Father, for our church. We pray your blessings today, God, as we begin to, many people, pick up the pieces. God, we, we know that you're right there in the midst of it. And so we pray, Lord, today as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, and uh, of course, this is our fifth Sunday, and uh, as, as we mentioned, uh, you should have an insert, fifth Sunday offering. If you don't have it prepared today, you can bring it next week. Uh, there's some stories uh, in there, I think a couple stories that you can look at. Thank you for your giving and for uh, this ministry and, and what it is able to help uh, with them. We continue to pray for, for Julie Hager Love, as she directs this ministry and for the ministry itself. So at this time, we're going to sing our doxology. And then, uh, Richie, if you would, I would ask you to pray this morning.
the worrying and prone to disasters is chapter this play. Nor did your God turn the trouble, and you're not going to say anything in promise to the case state, which is true to you. God, as we come into this service, I just pray for this service today, pray for this message to be set forth. We can all open our ears and hear what you said. We can all grow closer to you and closer one to another. God, we need to always remember that through you that all things can be accomplished. God, as we present this offering in your name to this church and this prayer for this offering, pray for your time to be found using it for the needs of the people and use it for the open heart. And I pray, dear God, as we give, we can all give with open heart and know and trust that it can be used to bring glory to your name. Give your God be with us in this service is not prayer, which you know that we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Give me a forward there. <clears throat> in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, Give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, when you can have all this world, but give me Jesus, and when I am alone, yes, when I church uh, recently uh, helped Tim and Blanche out a little bit with some uh, I think it's a deal dash card that enables them to pick up some uh, grocery items or delivered to them I guess and uh, just yesterday I think uh, the church received a thank you note uh, from Tim I'll read that to you what a generous, thoughtful gift. You know that my time away from the house is safe only if a third person keeps an eye on Blanche. I have some wonderful neighbors and church friends who provide that eye, allowing me to run various errands. But your gift has totally eliminated that problem. We indulge DoorDash three to four times a week which gives our kind friends a bit of a break also. Thanks very much. Hospice is doing an outstanding job with Blanche and me. The She could receive no better care in any hospital, and I am learning so much about medicines. I may qualify for an MD degree myself. <laughs> Again, thank you all. God answers prayers. 
Through your prayers, God is helping both of us to maintain an optimistic attitude and even find some humor. Signed, Tim and Blanche. Our scripture text is taken from Luke chapter 12, parable of the rich fool. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. Let us pray. Father, we pray in the midst of a of hurting people. And we're brought to a realization once more that treasures and possessions stored up in this earthly kingdom are very temporary. Help it be a reminder, Father, to set our eyes upon you and those things that are truly important. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ron. So, the passage today, uh, I guess you could say it has to do with, with possessions, money, possessions, and all those things. Uh, unlike some preachers, I don't preach on the topic very often. In fact, I could probably count on one hand uh, since I've been here in, the, in these 10 years that I've really spoke on the subject of money. But our passage today in Luke chapter 12, uh, really, Jesus speaks specifically about things. Uh, more specifically, he talked about people that are rich. And that begs the question today, you know, since Jesus mentioned those that were rich and how difficult it was for them to get into heaven, was Jesus anti-rich? In other words, was Jesus against people being rich? Knowing that there were times that, you remember he said, you know, the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head, the foxes have hold, birds have nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. Jesus, when he came to this earth, gave up his riches of glory to become one of us. And so the question is before us this morning, was Jesus anti-rich? The verse 15 is kind of the heart of this where Jesus says, take care. Be on guard against all kinds of greed for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. And in this story there is a an aggrieved brother and uh, you know someone who was worried about different things and, and uh, this uh, rich man who has all of these things and he's been blessed to have a good crops and which was a sign of prosperity and and he continues to just make plans uh, for what he's going to do with his investments and this is not the first time that the, you know, someone who's had a, a problem with greed. We all remember the rich young ruler who uh, came to Jesus and 
he was not willing to, he was willing to give up anything except his possessions. And Jesus, uh, the Lord Jesus spoke to him and he walked away sorrowfully. Even the religious leaders in Jesus' day had money in, in their pockets. And y'all remember when they came to Jesus and they were asking the question, uh, should we give tribute to Caesar? In other words, should we pay our quarterly tax payments to Caesar? And Caesar was one who many people uh, felt like he set himself up as the, the ruler, as God, really. And many people worshipped him. In fact, his inscription was on their coins. And you all remember Jesus said, does anyone have a coin? One of the people there took a coin out of the robe and handed it to Jesus. And Jesus said, whose image is on that coin? And they said, Caesar's. And Jesus said, render unto Caesar's the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. You know, today's society is a lot different uh, than it used to be. Because we live in virtually a cashless society. It's so much different. Uh, uh, I very seldom carry cash. Now, some of the older people still may uh, do that. But uh, many of the younger generation do not carry cash, do not use cash to pay for things. We don't write checks uh, very seldom. Uh, for example, uh, most of our bills we pay online. We don't go in a, in a place and pay those bills. And we use, uh, if we want to send money or get money, we use Venmo or PayPal or uh, one of those type of things to, to pay, uh, to give money and all this. So very seldom do we uh, use cash these days. And one of the big things that we hear and a lot about today is uh, some of the things like cryptocurrency, like Bitcoin. It's a big business. Uh, and basically, uh, it's, it's a business that, by the way, it, it's generated about uh, just under $2 trillion uh, last year. I mean, it's a big business. Uh, some, some say it's the currency of the future. And it's something that is really uh, taking the Internet by storm in a lot of ways. But there is a problem with cryptocurrency. It's, it's highly speculative. Uh, it's what some people call the greater fool in theory of investment. In order to get money from cryptocurrency, like Bitcoin, you have, someone has to pay more for it than you paid for it. So if you pay a certain amount, someone has to come along and pay more than you did. And that's why they call it the greater fool investment. This is where Jesus might step in today with kind of a takeaway when he says in verse 21, you fool. This very night your life is being demanded of you. Here's this rich man with all these things and he says to himself, wow, I've got so much stuff. What am I going to do with my stuff? No thought about, well, I could give some of it away and, and I can invest and still do okay, but there's people down the road that might need a little bit of it. No thought of that whatsoever. He said, I'm just going to, I know what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and I'll build bigger barns and I'll, and I'll just continue to keep all my stuff. Jesus said, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves and are not rich towards God. The things that you have spent your own life possessing and, and acquiring, you're getting ready to leave those things. And then who will they be? Think of it, as there's a lot of truth to that. We work, we toil, we spend our lives building homes and having things and having stuff. And then before long, we leave that stuff. Someone else will be living in our home, driving our car, spending our money. 
you think about the word, the fact that uh, people use what they call cryptocurrency, uh, the word crypto should give you a kind of a red flag. <laughs> because the word cryptic means secret or occult, um, mysterious, obscure, vague, all these things. And uh, it's just, they understand why they call it the greater fool uh, theory. So let me say, first of all, n number one, that Jesus was not anti-rich. He was anti-greed. He wasn't anti-rich, but he was anti-greed. And by the way, you don't have to be rich to be greedy. I know a lot of people who, who aren't rich, but they're greedy. And you can see that uh, as you look in town at some of the blessing boxes uh, where they come and they put things in uh, and you'll watch one person come up and just take everything and never thought, no thought of leaving some for someone else. But Jesus said, take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Verse 15. So the first warning there is take care. It's a Greek word. Meaning, it means to see. Uh, as if Jesus is saying you don't get it. Open your eyes and guard against all kinds of greed and all these things. Security was important in the ancient world in days before they had all of the technological uh, abilities to, uh, to keep things uh, in stock. And in fact, some of you uh, know that in the, during the Depression, one of the things that happened was uh, people began to run on the banks and take all their money out. And it wasn't until uh, the President uh, Wilson uh, decided to really uh, guarantee their investments that this stopped happening. But security was so important in those days that you could easily, uh, if you had your treasure wherever it was in your closet or buried in a hole in the yard or whatever, someone could easily steal it. And you had to be on guard against that. And, and that's why Jesus said, let up treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not corrupt, where threes do not break in and steal. Because if you had all of your treasures in one place, someone could come in and take it all at once. So Jesus is saying, do not let greed grab you by the throat and really rob you of your life. Because that can happen. And I think that's Jesus' meaning. Greed is a, uh, a detour that becomes a one-way street. I think of that sign that I remember uh, hearing about at uh, Niagara Falls as you're going down the, the river. And right before you get to the drop-off <laughs> to Niagara Falls, there's a point where it's kind of too late to turn around. The sign says, point of no return. And I think that's true for a lot of people. It's like a dead end road. It's, it's like once you get to that point, uh, there's no turning back. There's no cul-de-sac where you can turn around. You are, your life then becomes something that you're consumed with getting more and more and more. You're ne by the way, you're never happy because you never get enough. So Jesus says one's life does not consist of the abundance of possessions. So what is the alternative to greed? Well, the alternative is generosity. Like that of the widow, when she went and put in a few coins, and so many of them were given so much more than she ever thought about giving. And all she had was one little mite. And she puts that in and drops it in the coffee. And all of them like... Can't please, you know, we don't need your little penny. And then Jesus said, no, actually she gave more than all of you because she gave all that she had. And you out of your abundance, you ha you're not going to miss what you gave. Dr. Rob Haddon Robinson, he's uh, gone on to be with the Lord, but one of the great preachers uh, who uh, had some great sermons but he said, he defines covetousness as simply craving more of what you have enough already. 
Let me say that again. Covetousness is simply craving more of what you have enough already. So the alternative would be just to be generous and you already have enough, start giving things away. Things. And I know uh, if you've seen those shows of the hoarders, uh, I know people like that. They may not be quite as bad as their house is complete, but I do know a few people, but uh, they they can't give anything away. And I know some, uh, some people uh, who grew up from a, an era where uh, you know, where you needed everything you had, it, they have a hard time letting go of that, even though they no longer need it. I think our younger people are much better at this. They're much better at learning how to live with less stuff. Learning how to live without everything that we think we have to have. Many of them have learned how to live uh, in tiny spaces with a, with a lot less clutter. And so the idea there, you know, if sometimes it just start giving things away, you know, maybe things in your closet or things that you haven't, you never wore or never will wear. Maybe we should start looking at, well, what can I do to bless someone else? You probably won't miss them. What's there to miss if you already have more than you need already? So Jesus wasn't not anti-rich. He was anti-greed. Number two, Jesus was not anti-rich. He was anti-worry. I think He wanted to simplify, want us to simplify our lives, like I was saying. We, we tend to make life complicated. And that, that happens because uh, we think we need more than we do. Uh, some of you may remember uh, George Carlin, the great theologian, uh, comedian, uh, George Carlin. Uh, one of his uh, uh, comedian skits, he was talking about how we have accumulated an abundance of possessions. And actually his word was stuff. But in his, one of his famous riff on possession, he, he says, that's all your house is, a place to keep your stuff. If you didn't have so much stuff, you wouldn't need a house. If you could, you could just walk around all the time. A house is just a pile of stuff with a cover on it. That's what your house is, a place to keep your stuff while you go out and get more stuff. Sometimes you got to move, got to get a bigger house. Why? No room for your stuff anymore. And having all this stuff just increases worry and worry becomes a burden because we carry that around with us. That burden gets heavier because we keep getting more stuff. And I think that's exactly what happens to the rich man in Jesus' story. Don't you? I mean, he's just riddled with anxiety. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I've got so much stuff and I don't have room. And what am I going to do? And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Woe is me. What should I do? And then he says, I don't have enough room, so I'm going to make more room for my stuff. And he gets this insane idea. I'll pull down my bar barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my stuff. His actual words are my grain and all my goods. What a fool, Jesus says. His passions were his possessions, and it was a source of anxiety. And Jesus says to him, Thou fool, this night your soul will be required of you. So the worry for, uh, the remedy for worry is simplification. Someone has said, Success is getting what you want, happiness is wanting what you get. You ever know those people that no matter what they get, they're always wanting more? Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear, for life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Thou fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? Listen to the rich fool, and I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, Drink and be merry. And Jesus doesn't pull any punches at all, does He? And He calls Him, Thou fool, you fool. 
And he's not just a fool, he's a greater fool. He's the greatest fool because he's short-sighted. And he doesn't realize that his priorities are a mess. And uh, he's no, no aware of the, of the risk and the downsides and the trends and the dangers. And worse, he's not rich toward God. He has no thought for others. As we think about this world today that we live in, and it seems like every time we turn around, we're hearing more and more of devastation and all these things. And, and, and no doubt there, there is something going on in, in our world today. No doubt there is some climate uh, ass changes going on. Uh, what we don't know is exactly why, but it's, it's happening all around us. And it seems like these are becoming the norm in places that we haven't expected them. Floods and earthquakes and fires and all these things are happening all around us. And it's enough to just make you want to like throw in the towel. Like what in the world are we getting ourselves into? But then we're reminded as the scripture was read this morning from Colossians that God is still on the throne. God is still on the throne and nothing takes God by surprise. And that's why sometimes we have to get our heads out of the clouds and look above and see the things that God has done. And that's why he said, if ye be then risen with Christ, set your affection on things above and not on things of the earth. For you have died, and your life is hid with Christ. Set your affection on things above and not on things of the earth. You see, if we only see around in this world, then we'd be miserable. I love that, that song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, Look Full in His Wonderful Face, and the things will grow, and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. If we can't see beyond the horizon, if we can't see there's hope beyond, if we can't see that God is on the throne, then we will, no doubt, be filled with anxiety and worry. See, Jesus was not anti-rich, but He was aware that wealth is not without its problems. And it caused a lot of problems for a lot of people. But He also realized that with God, all things are possible. He even realized that rich people, poor people, all people could be saved. He knew that it wasn't about money, but it was about the love of money. That it wasn't about possessions, but the abundance of possessions. That it wasn't about working hard, but people that only work for themselves. And that it wasn't about being rich, but about not being rich toward God. John Wesley, you know, his famous saying, and in one of his famous sermons on money, he said, earn all you can, save all you can, so you can give all you can. Wesley and Jesus were not against us being rich. I don't know of any, too many people that are rich, but, uh, you know, John Wesley would say, yeah, make all the money you can, and earn all you can, and just continue to do that, so you can help more people. So whether you're in the stocks and bonds, gold coins, cryptocurrencies, paper money, uh, Teslas, <laughs> Fords, whatever, Jesus probably doesn't care. But what He is against is greed and worry and short-sightedness. He wants us to be rich toward God. Using our wealth ethically, compassionately, and responsibly. And we're, I'll leave you with this, this word here in verse 20. The things that you have prepared, whose will they be? Let's pray as the musicians come. Dear Lord, as we are reminded that God, we are on this earth for a short time. And Lord, we can't do everything, but we can do something. And we were blessed to be a blessing. So Lord, help us to open our hearts, to look around, 
When we look within, we only see our own selves and our own worries and our own problems. But as we look around, we see others who are struggling. And Lord, maybe we can be a help, a friend, come alongside, offer a cup of coffee, pray for someone who's in need today. And Lord, if you lead us, let us go. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to get a song of the invitation. We'll ask you if you'd like to stand and sing with us. The invitation is always open. If you'd like to come and pray, our altar is always open. And uh, we'd love to pray with you. Let's stand and sing, Take My Life and Let It Be. Go out to this world and speak the word of life and hope. And may the God who breathes life into creation be your delight. Let us sing our sin forth with blessings.